might show the uh, examples of people who, who risk their lives to protect their freedom, who risk their lives to protect their uh, um, equality. Or he says even go to the zoo and see how animals just hate captivity. And he uses the uh, uh, example of, a, of an animal that smashes its head against the bars of the cage because it can't stand not being free. Now we have gotten used to our unfreedom uh, and that is uh, not a sign that unfreedom is natural or that our situation is natural. It's a sign that we have become perverted uh, and our natural love of freedom uh, is disappearing. A sign of this perversion for Rousseau is that rich people, he says, are happy because of the existence of the poor. That the wealth itself doesn't mean that much to them, but what means something to them is that they can look at other people and feel superior to them. So this is towards the end, page 195. If one sees a handful of powerful and rich men at the pinnacle of greatness and fortune, while the masses crawl in obscurity and misery, it is because the former value the things they enjoy only to the extent that the others, the poor, are deprived of them. And they would cease to be happy if, without any change in their own state, the people cease to be miserable. That is, it's seeing the misery of other people which gives the wealthy people a sense of satisfaction. So he, he was invited to a, a party, and, he, and, and the entertainment at the end of the party was that the um, a huge banquet, um, uh, 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 tables laden with food too big for their eyes, too large for their appetites. So afterwards, the, all the, the, the aristos, the aristocrats go outside, and they see the peasants who are you know, living at the edge of starvation, and they take bread and they just throw the, throw the bread in the presence and watch them scram. That was amusing. And for some, you know, he says, he, then he writes, says, I can't believe I was there. I can't, I am such a hypocrite. I am such an awful person. Let me tell you about it. Read her. And, and he says, why do these people behave this way? They, the rich people have to Why do they behave this way? Because they only like having that much food because the other people are starving. Because nobody really likes this. They don't like it that much. They learn to like it because they say, well, I can eat this and those people can. So this is a, a great sign, awful sign uh, of our corruption. And that leads to what for him is this existential situation where we live outside of ourselves. The genuine cause of all these differences is that the savage man lives in himself. Sociable man, Rousseau writes, always outside himself. Sociable man is capable of living only in the opinion of others, and, and so to speak, derives the sentiment of his own existence solely from their judgment. He's critiquing the rich for their sadism, getting satisfaction from, from the existence of poverty, but he's critiquing the whole society for creating um, conditions for vanity and hypocrisy um, so that uh, we live outside ourselves. We want to be seen in a certain way by other people. It is manifestly against the law of nature, however defined, that a child command an old man, an imbecile lead a wise man, and a handful of people abound in superfluities while the starving multitude lacks the necessities. This is against the law of nature. That the society he lives in, remember a society still built on divine right of kings, a society built on this kind of baked in natural, uh, they called natural Rousseau says, this whole society um, is illegitimate because it's a violation of who we are as human beings. That the imbecile leaves the rest. That's, a, that's pretty damning. You can see why Rousseau um, uh, was, uh, was a shocking uh, writer uh, uh, to the uh, uh, society around him. I want to pull uh, this to a close by just um, uh, giving you some reactions to Rousseau 